Hi, this is Dave from Retired Time Productions, and welcome to the Polaris XL Build Project, Part 11. So working on the electronics to the Polaris XL, I've got the vector flight controller right here, but I need to get power to it, so I'm working on the power module right now. So what I've done is taken the plastic cover off the power module and soldered on a JST plug right here. And this will allow me to plug on a UBEC. So the UBEC plugs into this end of the power module where the current sensor is and the battery goes on the other end. So this means the current sensor will measure the current from the ESC plus the current from the UBEC with all its accessories. So that totals all of the currents together to get a total value for the current on the OSD display. So anyway, I'm going to plug the UBEC on here. That's why I soldered the JST plug onto there. And here's the UBEC. And the other end is going to plug in the servo bus on the vector to run the servos. So here's a quick overview on the layout that I have here. And then I'll go to a little snippet of a video that shows you quickly how I got this all programmed. And for more detailed information I have a video, a previous video that I did on the vector, that shows in more detail how to set up the entire system right here. Basically, I've got my Easy UHF receiver hooked on here with one servo cable and the uh, SPPM configuration. So I'm just going to have all my channels going over one wire right here. And probably won't be using these servo cables since I'm using the SPPM. Now over here, I have my video out just going to a cable right here just ignore this battery lead, not using it. But I just got the video on the ground going to this cable here which goes over here to my monitor so I can see the OSD display. Normally the video transmitter would go onto that one, the Video TX. That's what it says on this plug, Video TX. Now this plug here has the camera, which was simple. I just hooked the wire from the camera to that plug. Very simple, no soldering there. And over here I have my uh, power module, the vector power module plugged in and I have both of the 12 volt wires hooked up. I didn't use the 5 volt one they provided, I just used the two 12's which feed these two plugs for 12 volts. And over here I just have my battery laying here where I can plug it in. And then of course I added this little mod to my power module so I have a tap coming off that goes to a to a UBEC here that I got from Ready Made RC, 5 volt UBEC. And I need that, that's very important because this servo output bus here does not provide any voltage to the servo. So you got to provide your own. So I'm using this UBEC. Also, there's no voltage going to the receiver without putting voltage on this bus. So this provides voltage to the receiver and to the servos when I plug them on. Okay, so let's configure the Easy UHF 8 channel light receiver and the vector flight controller with OSD. So, first, let's launch the Easy UHF configuration tool and choose the Easy UHF 4 channel light, which is what I have. And then we're going to read the settings from it. Now, I already have the latest firmware, which is 1.5. Let's put in the 12 channel mode and then update the settings. All right, now we'll go to the servo mapping and read those settings. Now in the servo output, on channel 1, we want to set that to PPM MUX. And then on the inputs, we want to set channel 11 as RSSI and channel 12 as link quality. Okay. Also set channel 2 output off and set channels 3 and 4 outputs to 9 and 10 so they might be used as the pan tilt or other accessories. And then go ahead and update those settings. Okay, so next we're going to launch the vector configuration tool and connect the vector by USB cable. Alright, first thing, let's update the firmware. 
and we're going to go to the latest firmware and that's automatic it just goes there so once that's done we want to go to the uh, RC configuration no actually the airframe configuration and choose the airframe which is the traditional fixed wing and later on we're going to have to confirm this with the OSD using our radio once that's set up okay now the RC configuration and we're going to go in and set channel 11 to RSSI and channel 12 to link quality. We have to run the uh, RX analysis wizard later. So let's apply this and then save the configuration and then let's set up the radio. Okay, I've got all of my channels in right in the mixer now. I had to swap the uh, throttle down to channel 3 so I got aileron elevator throttle rudder and then SB and SA for my mode switches, mode and sub modes. Okay, now that we have the Easy UHF receiver configured and we got the RSSI and link quality set up in it, and we have our radio switches and other things set up, we can now run the RX analysis wizard. Okay, I'm going to start out. We got our 12 channels, and then we'll go next and move mode switch to a different position okay now the wizard will learn about your stick throws safe settings and rssi readings turn your transmitter off now and click next okay so i'm going to turn it off and click next turn your transmitter back on welcome to toronto's move your throttle stick all the way down off click next the wizard is complete. Woohoo! Now we click finished. Okay, now we can confirm our air that our airframe is actually a plane now that we have our mode switches set up. So I'm gonna turn on the radio. Welcome to Toronto's. It says over here, please confirm the air type by click mode to accept type. So I think that's this mode switch. So let's see what happens. I don't see it saying anything about the uh, frame type now, though. It looks like it solved that. It had to turn it off and back on. So this is the way I have the flight mode set up right here. This is the main mode switch, and this is the sub mode switch. Under the mode switch, it starts with stabilization off, which is what I consider manual. And then it goes to 2D no hold. That's just plain stabilization with no altitude hold or heading hold. And then on the third position of the mode switch, it transfers over to the sub-mode switch. So this position will first be loiter with the sub-mode switch here. So then just leaving the mode switch in this third position, you can go to loiter, and then you can go to hold, and then return to home, all on the sub-mode switch. And that's the way it's set up, and I've been flying it that way on my Twin Star for a while, and it works good. So I'm going to use the same thing on the Polaris XL seaplane. So we have the Easy UHF uh, RSSI and uh, link quality here uh, already in our channel mappings. But we need to make sure they show up on the OSD screen. So let's go to the OSD setup right over here. And then we'll go to Advanced and go down to the GPS receiver and GPS signals and you'll see right here that the uh, RSSI is already on the screen by default but the link quality is not showing up so what we can do is come over here and then click on RX link quality and then it fills it in right here but if you look up here it's not on the screen yet. There's our SSI, but there's no link quality. So what we have to do now is go ahead and apply it. So when I press this apply button, it should appear on the screen up here. Let's see what happens. And there it is. Now if I turn on my radio, Welcome to Toronto's. I'll just wait and see what happens. One more beat, and there they come up. So we got about 100% on both of them. 
Okay, here's a quick demo on how to use the on-screen menus. You just toggle the mode switch twice within a second, like that, and the menu will come up. And then you can scroll down through the menus with the elevator stick. Down goes down, up goes up. You can go into a menu by just going right with the aileron. And you can get back out of a menu by going left. And then you can either just keep going left to toggle out of the menu or use the mode switch to get out of the menu. So if you have any trouble with your RSSI or link quality not showing up on your OSD screen, the solution usually is just to run the Vector Learn Wizard again and just go through all the steps in the Learn Wizard and they usually start working. Okay, so I'll put a couple links underneath this video to other videos I have that go into more depth on this, uh, especially like setting up the flight modes and also running through the vector setup and learn wizard again. Here,